Hi, this is Madam Narka, and in this video, we're going to talk about the atom. We know that the atom is the smallest unit of a chemical element. And because atoms make up everything, we really can trust them. But that's just a joke. Let's now go to the formal discussion of the atomic structure. We now know that inside the atom is a nucleus, and the nucleus is at the center, and it's a very dense region. And inside the nucleus are the subatomic particles called the positively charged protons and the neutrally charged neutrons. These two subatomic particles are bound by nuclear charge, and these two particles are the main contributors of the mass of the atom. Surrounding the nucleus of the atom are what we call the electrons. The electrons are the negatively charged particles that are very, very tiny, and their masses are negligible. So the electrons are moving around the nucleus of the atom, and they are in an atomic orbital. So how do we identify the number of subatomic particles in the atom? We're going to look at this diagram, and this will guide us through. In this diagram, this is just a simple diagram of the Bohr's illustration of the electrons moving in orbits. But this is just to simplify the visualization of your atom. Now, if you look at this drawing, we know that in the nucleus, we have the positive protons and the zero or neutral charge neutrons and surrounding it are the negatively charged electrons. If we count the number of particles in this carbon atom, which is neutral, we must get six protons in the nucleus and outside the nucleus, we should get six electrons to balance the neutral carbon atom. Because when we talk about neutral atoms, the positive protons should be equal to the negative electrons. And then on the other hand, we also have six neutrons. So the six protons and the six neutrons of the carbon atom are the main contributors of the mass of your carbon atom. Let's dwell further. If you look at this diagram again, and if you look at the solution, if we look at carbon in the periodic table, we will see that carbon has an atomic symbol of C, or a chemical symbol of C, and on top of it is a number six. And below the symbol C, you'll see the name carbon, and below it, you'll see the average atomic mass of carbon. Now, I want you to focus your attention on the number above the symbol of the element. That number six represents the number of protons of carbon because number six is what we call the atomic number of the element of carbon. So atomic number is the number you use to see on top of the symbol of the element. And that's how the elements are arranged in the periodic table. Those atomic numbers are in order, and that atomic number gives the identity of your element. No two different elements share the same atomic number. So only carbon has an atomic number of six, and that atomic number of six represents the number of protons. And because the carbon is neutral, the number of protons has to be equal to the number of electrons as well, so that the positive protons and the negative electrons have to have equal value. And so how do we get the number of neutrons? The number of neutrons will just be taken from subtracting your mass number 12 with the atomic number 6. So mass number minus atomic number equals the number of neutrons. So take note of that. 
what I've been telling you about is through this particular atomic symbol format. So on your screen, you see the atomic symbol format of writing the isotope of carbon. So this is carbon-14. Carbon can have other isotopes aside from carbon-14. But in this case, carbon-14 is written with an atomic symbol using this format. So the symbol first of carbon, and then on the left side, superscript, you will see or you will write the mass number. And on the left side still, but subscript, you're going to write the atomic number of carbon. So this is how you're going to see how the mass number gets separated with the atomic number. Now take note, I mentioned the word isotope. Isotope means it should be atoms of the same element, but these atoms of the same element may differ in their mass number because isotopes are elements that have different number of neutrons. So if the number of neutrons differ, then the mass number gets affected. So take note of that definition because you will be dealing with more isotopes later on. So take note of the format you see on the screen, element symbol first, and then on the left side of the element symbol, superscript mass number, and the atomic number will be the subscript. I will leave this one to you. This is the template in writing atomic symbols. So X represents the symbol of the element. A is usually the abbreviation for mass number, in which mass number is just the sum of your number of protons and the number of neutrons. So mass number superscript will be taken from adding your protons and your neutrons, and then you get the value. It should be a whole number value. Then on the subscript, still on the left side, if you see this, the symbol Z, Z means atomic number. And take note, I just said that, that the atomic number of the element can be seen in the periodic table, and you see that on top of the symbol of the element. Please do not refer to the values below the symbol of the element. Do not refer to that for the mass number because this mass that you see on your periodic table is already the average atomic mass of all the isotopes of that element. We're not concerned of that yet. So stick to the formula of mass number which is just adding the protons and the neutrons. And the number of protons you can determine in the atomic number, which you can see in the periodic table, the number on top of the symbol of the element. Okay, so please look forward to more exercises in your class with your teacher around. And please don't forget to leave some comments if you have questions. And please like, share, and subscribe to our academy. Bye-bye. Don't give up on learning. Never stop learning, relearning, and unlearning. Till next time. Bye-bye.